I have always had this belief when it comes to filmmaking, and that is, you need to understand sales and marketing. You need to sell an audience on not only why they need to see your movie, but see your movie above all others. You need to understand the end benefit of your film and determine why somebody is going to stop everything that they're doing and watch your movie. Not only are you selling somebody something that will entertain them, but will also captivate them in a way that distracts them from the outside world. Also, when it comes to sales and marketing, you need to understand your target demographic. When you're selling something that is as expensive as a movie, you can't have a niche audience. In fact, your audience is everyone. Everyone has their own beliefs and ideas, so marketing towards a larger crowd can be difficult. My personal favorite way to determine an audience's beliefs is by looking at their voting habits. For example, when I look at the US, I don't just look by state, but by county. In this case, when you're making a movie, your main goal is to tell a good story and not preach something like a political ideology to an audience. Yet, when you look at most movies being made today, especially blockbusters, they tend to lean towards one side of the political aisle. Movies have gone from being entertainment to platforms for preaching a political ideology. But why? Surely there has to be some reason behind the industry wanting to prop up political messages over telling a good story. What if I told you there was one thing behind this so-called shift, let's say, that is not just affecting Hollywood but the rest of the corporate world? That one thing is ESG scores. What is an ESG score, you ask? An ESG score is a ranking scale for how companies address environmental, social, and governance issues. Examples that would fall under these three categories would be a company's carbon footprint, if they're energy efficient or not, their response to social issues, pro-diversity efforts, and business practices. When ranked, companies can receive either a score out of 100 or be given a classification such as leaders, average, or laggards. Companies that have less than 50% are considered poor, while ones that rank over 70% are considered to be excellent. A perfect example of a company that has a high ESG score would be Microsoft, and one with a low score, ironically enough, is Tesla. But why does a company like Tesla that is known for producing electric vehicles have such a low score? Well, it's because they fall short of social and governance issues. If, if somebody's going to try to blackmail me with advertising, blackmail me with money, go f*** yourself. And the people who invest in companies really don't like Elon Musk. Go f*** yourself. <laughs> is that clear? So how is all of this influencing film? Studios aren't able to track something like their carbon footprint as efficiently as Amazon or Apple, so what do they do? In an article published by The Hollywood Reporter titled, How Hollywood Courts Wall Street's ESG Investors, Mainly with Film and TV Messages, Not Carbon Offsets, the article breaks down how companies like Disney, Paramount, and Netflix have altered their business operations to be more ESG friendly. For example, these companies have either started to use solar panels, partnered with social causes, or have started to feature electric vehicles in their movies and TV shows. However, the title of the article is a little misleading as in reality, it actually goes a little bit deeper than that. In my previous video, How Star Wars Became the New Coke of Hollywood, check it out. I talked about how Disney had purchased a brand that was historically targeted towards males and now have started targeting it towards females. Recently, the director for the upcoming Ray movie came out and said that the movie will be quote-unquote feminist, and that it's about time a woman has influenced a galaxy far, far away. Despite the franchise being influenced by Kathleen Kennedy for the last decade, Marcia Lucas to be the one to save the very first Star Wars movie in post-production, more than 50% of the Lucasfilm executives are women, Disney Plus Star Wars episodes being directed by women and sometimes entire series being directed by women, and the franchise having strong female characters since its inception, why are these comments being made now? Better yet, why is a Star Wars film going to be injected with feminist ideology? That would be Disney boosting their ESG score by making a film that tackles social issues like feminism. Marvel Studios has been doing the same ever since the beginning of Phase 4. The upcoming X-Men movie is reported to be female-centric and will have an evil white man as the main antagonist. The upcoming Fantastic Four movie will be centered around Sue Storm and we'll see her leading the team instead of Mr. Fantastic. These decisions are made to cater towards ESG investors, so the company can make quote-unquote more money. So, uh, how is that working out for them? I 
I know what some of you might be thinking. Feminism being injected into these movies should be a good thing. It's about time women had their own Star Wars or Marvel movies, and it's great that a company has the same political views as me. However, these companies actually don't believe in the same things as you do, and instead are incentivized to tout these beliefs because of ESG scores. It's no different than companies changing their social media profiles and putting out products to capitalize on Pride Month once a year. Remember what I said in the beginning of this video about not alienating a portion of your audience because everyone has their own beliefs and opinions? Some of you might be thinking, well, who cares what they think? Screw them. But unfortunately, like I said, when you're selling something as big as a movie, you need to care. If you're going to make a movie and you want it to be successful, you have to make something that doesn't alienate a portion of your audience. That means you have to tell stories that everyone is going to enjoy. This applies for both the left and the right when it comes towards the political spectrum. I'm not saying you can't make movies that lean to either side of the political aisle. I'm saying that if you want to make a financially successful movie, you must not pander heavily to either side. You can use critiques of certain political topics or social issues to enhance the story of your film, but never preach to an audience about something that they may or may not agree with. Take Jaws, for example. If I told you that there was a critique of capitalism within the film, would you think that Jaws is an anti-capitalist movie because of this scene here? I'm only trying to say that Amity is a summer town. We need summer dollars. No, it just uses aspects of capitalism, like corporate greed, to influence the story. On the flip side, let's look at Barbie. Despite its success, Barbie preaches a third-wave feminist message and paints all men as being evil. You guys are clearly not doing patriarchy very well. We're doing it well. Yeah, we just uh, hide it better. Now. Yes, Barbie was successful, but it was always going to be successful regardless if it had a political message or not. A movie that utilizes a feminist message without being preachy would be something like Legally Blonde. A movie about a woman discovering her self-worth and demonstrates that she doesn't need a man to define her. Unlike Barbie, when the movie does take jabs at men, it does it in a more lighthearted and much more funnier way. And that's why you should vote for me, Elle Woods, future lawyer for the class of 2004. She does have a 4.0 from CULA, and she got a 179 on her LSATs. A fashion major? Well, sir, we've never had one before, and aren't we always looking for diversity? She was in a Ricky Martin video. Clearly, she's interested in music. Injecting a polarizing political message into your film can also damage its narrative, if not done properly. In Barbie, the movie's political messaging felt overt and forced. Something like this can distract an audience, bringing them right out of the movie entirely. Like I said in the beginning, movies are escapist fun that distract people from the real world. The blatant political messages that Hollywood injects to boost their ESG scores actually turn audiences away, hurting their overall profitability. As evident with most major studios who have done this to boost their ESG scores, they have not been profitable. Above all else, they are more focused on platforming these environmental, social, and political issues over telling stories that audiences will buy into. This has hurt them so much, in fact, that it is estimated that Hollywood is going to lose another billion at the box office in 2024 alone. Hey guys, thank you so much for watching my video. If you like to see more content, click like and subscribe for more. Be sure to check out my previous videos and I'll see you guys in the comments section.